Hello, my name is Rickard and I'm going to show you how to creatively blend two images in Photoshop. We're going to start with this and we're going to end up with this. Now I've seen a few other tutorials on how to do this, but I figured I'd give you my method of doing it, including some awesome tricks that you can use in any of your compositing projects or in retouching or color grading images. Go ahead and download the assets in the description of this video and let's get started. All right, let's go to File, Open. We're gonna start with the background image. First thing I wanna do is just cut out this house. So I'm gonna zoom into that, holding down spacebar and command, select my lasso tool, make a rough selection around it, and then go up to Edit, Contents, or Where Fill. And you can see here that the Contents Aware Fill is using this background sky to fill it in. I don't like that, so on my left panel here, I'm just going to erase that part of the sky from its selection. And there you go. Now it's using this part, and that looks really nice. Let's hit OK. And let's do deselect, which is Command D. Next thing I want to do is get rid of this little hot spot here. I do realize it's reflecting off this, but with our composite image this is going to be a little distracting. So I'm going to select the circular or elliptical marquee, hold down option and just make a selection around it. Now this is obviously a sharp selection, so I'm going to show you a quick trick on how to feather a selection. Hit Q, that'll put you in quick mask mode, and then you can just use a Gaussian blur. And there you go, that's uh, about 85. And there you go. You now have a nice feathered selection. Hit Q again, and it'll transfer that information back into your selection. Let's go up here, use a hue saturation layer. And when you add an adjustment layer with a selection, it'll turn that into your mask. And select this little hand tool here. Just select that yellow color and drag to the left to desaturate. And then I can drag my lightness slider to the left as well. There you go, that got rid of that. Let's select these three layers and do right mouse click, convert to smart object and call that background. Next, I'm gonna do file, place embedded, and open the woman in water. And I want this placed at 100%. And then I'm gonna convert it to a smart object. And let's call this woman. And let's change the opacity to 50% so we can see it in relation to the background. And I want her head to be right kind of meeting that little V in the mountain there. Maybe even intersecting with it almost. And then I'm gonna do Command T for free transform, move my anchor point to there and change the scale to 85. Maybe to the left, just a little. That right there. All right, good. Let's put it back to 100%. And then I'm going to go to Quick Selection Tool, Select Subject. I want to cut her out of this background. So there you go. That's done a pretty good job. Let's go into Select and Mask, refine that just a bit. I'm going to zoom in here, go into my Refine Edge Brush, and just paint around the edge of her hair. With this brush, you want to paint about halfway between your selection and what you don't want selected. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to go in the normal selection brush. Just paint in the spot that it missed. And for the purpose of this tutorial, that's probably going to work. Maybe I can make my brush a bit bigger. Just select this area here. If you want to spend more time on the selection, you can. I'm going to turn on the smart radius, add three pixels and hit OK. And then add a mask by clicking on the mask icon. There you go. That looks pretty nice. Now you can see that she doesn't really belong in this background. Her black point is very different from the background. And also her white point and her light areas here are quite different. 
So let's fix that. I'm going to make sure I have her selected and go to Image, Adjustments, Curves. And if I click Auto, you can see it's trying to correct that curve without fixing the black point and without fixing the white point. So what we're going to do instead is click on Options and we're actually going to use this, Find Dark and Light Colors. Let's turn that on. You can see right away it's doing a pretty good job. Let's hit OK. And then what I want to do is maybe just add a little more yellow. So the opposite of blue is yellow. So if we go into our blue channel and just pull that down, you can see that's adding some yellow. And then maybe add a little bit of red, go up on the red. And now we're getting that nice golden color on the left side of her there. Let's hit OK. Next, I want to get rid of this blue cast that's in her eyes and also down here. If we hold down Shift, um, you can see here the problem that we're having. So what I'm going to do is go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. We're going to do a similar thing that we did with the yellow high spot, a highlight. Select this little hand tool, select an area that has that blue color we want to get rid of. Just drag it to the left. You may actually even want to go a little lighter. So maybe this area here. There you go. So that color is coming out of our eyes there. That's what I want. That looks pretty good. Let's do a quick preview. Yeah, so there you can see we're getting rid of that blue cast. Let's hit OK. All right, that looks pretty nice. Next one I'm going to do is make a copy of this layer and drag it to the bottom. And I'm going to call this Woman. Actually, I'm going to call it Water Overlay. And this layer, I want to select the mask. And with a soft brush, that's pretty big. I want to just start, I'm going to make this even bigger. Change the opacity back to 100. I'm just going to start painting in on the mask. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Mask. Oh, make sure this is back on normal. I'm just going to paint around here so we get some of that water texture coming into our image. It's probably too much. What I can do is make my brush even bigger, change it to black, and then just hit a few times in here so that we're kind of hitting that back. You want this to blend so that it looks like it's part of it. And you can, you know, do your own adjustments to this. I also don't need her head in there because I'm just using this layer for the water. So that looks about good. And we have that layer here. Okay, so let's put this on overlay. And I'm also going to add a, another curves layer right on top here and just make this a little brighter. And then I'm going to make a copy of this layer and we're going to call the second copy water screen. And this one, you guessed it, we're going to put on screen. All right, here you can see what the screen is doing. It's obviously too strong. So let's double click on this curve that we added. And for this one, I'm going to reset it. So hold down option and the cancel button becomes a reset. I'm going to take down the darks. So about there looks good. Now we're getting kind of feels sort of like this area back here in terms of how much light and dark there is. But I wanted to have this golden cast. So let's go to our blue and just bring the top down to a little bit further down than halfway mark. And then go to green and we're going to add some magenta too. Not that much. Just until it has that nice golden color. So right about there. Let's hit OK. And I like how that looks. And we can always go in here 
And if I want to get rid of this blue, I can just go on my mask and with a black brush, just kind of paint that in. I can also, if I'd like, go with a white mask and just paint in her reflection here. Make that kind of like so. I like that. That looks pretty cool. Okay, the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of fog to the background so that we're separating her head here from this dark mountain. So let's go to our background layer, add a layer above it, and let's call this fog. I'm going to go to my gradient tool, which is G on the keyboard. Make sure I have radial gradient selected and just choose this color here. So this kind of brownish orange color. And I'm going to use the radial and just go out from kind of where the center is to about here. Make sure that it's completely contained. And then let's put this on screen and then do Command T for transform. I'm just going to drag this out, make it about look like that. And let's do, let's double it up. It's a little stronger there. That looks good. All right, and then I want to just intensify this hot spot in the sky. So let's go ahead and do that one more time, but this time I'm going to select this bright orangey color and make it a little redder. Go back to my gradient and do it again. Let's put that on screen and then just kind of make it a little bit bigger here. Kind of like that looks nice. Okay, and then on the background, if we look at our image of the woman, just turn off the screen temporarily by holding down shift and clicking on the mask, um, you can see that the background goes out of focus and it starts going out of focus almost immediately. So even when we're at her eyes, it's starting to be out of focus and it goes out of focus relatively quickly. So we want our background to have that same effect. So what we're going to do is go to filter, blur gallery, tilt shift. And the way tilt shift works is everything between the two blue dots is in focus. And then from the blue dot to the dotted line is a gradient going further and further out of focus or blurry. And then everything past the dots is blurry. So we're going to put this right kind of where she meets the water. I'm going to drag this down here so that right about there where her mouth is is where it starts getting blurry. And for the bottom, I don't want it to get blurry at all. So I'm just going to drag this past our image boundaries. And then here I can adjust how much it gets blurry. You can also adjust that here. Um, to match our image of her and her background, I would say it's probably around 15 or 20. You put it somewhere around there and hit OK. That looks pretty nice. Next, I want to just uh, make her face a little brighter. So I'm going to go to the very top and we're going to do the little marquee selection trick again. Hold down Option select her face and then I can actually right mouse click and do transform selection. And what that allows me to do is transform the selection without transforming any layer or anything inside the selection. So just right about there is where I want the selection. And then I want to feather the selection. So I'm going to hit Q, filter, Gaussian blur, And about 20 is good. Hit Q again, and then go up here and add a curves layer. And because I have a selection, it's going to add that to my mask. I can just bring this up to about there. Looks nice. And let's add a little bit of yellow to this. And a little bit of red, just so that we have that golden tone that's coming in there like so. Let's do Command-0. That looks nice. 
Last thing I want to do is just kind of do a final grade on the whole image. So to do that, I'm going to make a new layer. We're going to call this layer final grade. And I want to copy all these layers into here. To do that, I'm going to do shift option command E. Now I've got everything on one layer. I can convert this to a smart object. And the reason I'm converting it to a smart object is so that I can use any filters I add to it and just transfer it over if I want to. In this case, I'm doing a camera raw. I'm just going to take the temperature down, kind of neutralize the whole thing a bit. Add a little bit more exposure, a little bit more contrast, add a little texture, actually clarity. It's nice. Add some vibrance. Give this more of a painted look. I'm going to go to my tone curve, make sure I'm on point where I can split the channels. I'm going to go to blue, bring up the bottom, bring down the top, and then go to red and bring in the bottom and bring in the top. And then I'm going to go to split toning, add a little gold into the highlights and a little blue into the shadows and maybe push the shadows shadow balance so that we're getting a little more of that gold color and then in the effects i'm going to add some grain and also some post crop vignetting and let's hit okay there you can see that's the before and after that just gives the whole image a nice final grade there. And there you have it. Now I do have another video you should check out, which is a tutorial on how to color grade with gradient maps. This is a method I only learned after using Photoshop for like 15 years and I wish I had known it sooner because after I learned this, this is my go-to method of color grading. So check that out here. Otherwise, I will see you next time.